Hello and welcome to another, um, I'm just going to tilt my camera up a little bit, um, another Harrow of the Week. And I'm using the Gateway to the Divine Tarot. I really do like um, Ciro Marchetti's work. I really do. I just I love going onto his website. I love all the products that he has on offer. And the fact that he can make you a deck, he'll make one card that is specifically for you. I just think his imagery and his colours are phenomenal. So we've used um, his other deck before, and I'm, I think I will choose another one of his cards for this month. But this is the card that we have today. It looks quite dark, so I don't want you to panic because everyone panics about the swords. So here we have the Eight of Swords. Wow. Look at this lady here. She's in bondage. Now remember, the swords are the mental body, okay? So we've got the cups at our heart, the wands at our physicalness, we've got the swords at our mental body, um, and the pentacles are all that enrichment and spiritual stuff. But here, wow, lots going on in this card. We have the full moon in the background and we've got the spider's web and the eight swords coming in at her. And she's in this bondage. She can't see where she's going. She's caught in this web. She's restricted. She's just in suspended um, animation, suspended animation, if you will. In the background here, we have elements um, that are sort of swirling around, those dark clouds. And the spider, this little symbol here is the spider itself. So that little symbol there is the spider. So what does the Eight of Swords mean? And swords, as I say, it's one of those cards when I'm doing a tarot reading. So if, if client gets some swords, they get quite worried about swords. The swords in the tower, the devil and death. Those are the cards that people really go, oh, I don't know. What this card is really asking us to really think about, she's in suspended animation. So to point one of Michael's favourite sayings, analysis or paralysis by analysis, quite often we come to a stage or a place in our life where we can't actually see where we're going. We don't know how to get out of a situation. We can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and we feel really um, encapsulated by what is going on around us and it feels jagged, it feels really sharp. Regardless of what decision I make, I'm going to hurt someone. It could be I could be hurting myself, I could be hurting family members, I could be hurting colleagues, friends. If I take this action, there will be a consequence. And that's what the Eight of Swords is showing us today. There is light at the end of the tunnel, the full moon. So when we are looking at the cycles of the moon, when the moon is in its zenith, it's absolutely out there. We need to use that moon to break through whatever is holding us in a place of stillness, um, a place of status, a place of being held captive. We need to use that moon. And as the moon wanes, then the power that's been holding us also wanes. The grip gets less. There is light just behind her here. So there is light beyond this sort of dark swirling energy, these clouds. And she's held up in the air. So we need to make sure that we're going to ground ourselves, that we can make decisions in a really grounded, responsible, pertinent way that will, I suppose, give us the courage, the strength, the bravery that we need and the insights and the feelings of feeling supported to make really positive changes in our lives. You'll have tools. So the swords are your tools. Remember our brain, the mental body, swords. So our mind 
can bring forward tools that you can use to help you remove yourself from situations in which you're feeling really, really encapsulated. I think for myself, when I get to a place where I am feeling really trapped, the one thing my mind will go to, so the technique I use is, so what's the worst that can happen, Phil? And then I'll hear what that answer is and then I'll sit with that answer. I'll go, so what's the worst that can happen with that then? And I'll just keep asking, what is the worst? What is the worst? What is the worst? Until I get to that bottom part where it actually well, usually comes out to, well, nothing really because you're in charge. And so I use that aspect of my mental tool basket, if you will, to help me sort of decipher my way and, and to unpack situations that feel quite overwhelming, quite fearful and worrisome. I'll just unpack the whole lot so that I can get to that bottom part. There is a sense of vulnerability here as well. She doesn't have a lot of clothing on. And it feels even in looking at her physical being, you know, there's a sense of helplessness here. She's being laid bare practically. She's entwined not only in the spider's web, but in this ribbon of um, a cloth that is wiped around her. And there's just a sense of vulnerability. And we all go through that. We all go through processes where we just feel really vulnerable. But you have to just take a breath, really ground your energy, sit on the grass, naked feet, bare feet on the grass, feeling the earth below you, really connecting to what it feels like to feel quite solid and sturdy in the plains. But then from there, calming our mind and making some really positive, positive decisions. It's a really positive card. It may not look it. And in fact, none of the Swords cards look very positive. I know the Nine of Swords in the Thoth deck are literally dripping with blood. So it's quite a, quite a, you know, an intense part of the tarot cards. Um, but it is a useful card. It is reminding us that we know what to do. We know more than we know. We just need to dig a little bit deeper. And if people are going to get hurt, then people will probably get hurt. We can't stop that from happening. So take time to just reflect. Reflect on what is happening in your life right now. Where is it that you have to be maybe cruel to be kind? Where is it that you need to exert a little bit more power and energy to be heard, to be taken seriously. What is it that you need to do? That's what this card is asking us to do so that we can free ourselves from either imagined fears, real fears, imagined situations or real situations. So it's a big card. It's a helpful card. It's actually a hopeful card and I want you to look at it in a different more optimistic light. So I hope you've enjoyed our journey with the lovely Ciro Marchetti's artwork. I do like them even this darker type stuff and um, yes think about your mental agility and how you can use that to get yourself out of some sticky situations this week. Until the next time, we'll see you next week when we're back with Tarot of the Week. Take care for now. Bye.